<laughs> Hi, I'm Andy Jones, your host of Art Talk, and I am here with my good buddy, uh, Stephen White, who has been with me on a cross-country odyssey, uh, and this is our final stop. We are kind of coming back to the place where it all began. We are on the Florida Gulf Coast, and we are excited to be here. And just want to let you know that I can teach you how to paint. If you have any desire that you want to learn how to paint, I can teach you. I've taught thousands of people to paint, and it is one of those pastimes that can last you a lifetime. So we're glad that you're here with us on the beautiful beaches of Florida, and we are going to be painting a seascape today. I did not bring enough sunscreen for this. I am sure you did not because I need SPF 1000 and buckets of it. All right, so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what we're going to be painting today. I have a very long, very narrow canvas. This is a six by 36 canvas. And I always like to paint on something that's a little bit different, a little bit um, outside what you might ordinarily expect. And so you can find canvases of all different shapes and sizes on the internet these days. So it's not as though you have to go find this at your local art supply store. I ordered mine online and they are really a, a nice size to work on. I think this really gives you the kind of the great expanse of look, standing on the shore and looking out over the water. Now this area of the Florida Gulf Coast does have beautiful white sandy beaches. And we've also got lots of areas where we have this kind of scrubby um, shrubs. They're not sea oats, they're not little palms, they're not, they are just, this little foliage is tough stuff. If you gotta walk through it, you are wishing that you had found another way to the beach. So that's kind of where we're starting from here at our beachside retreat. And I'm gonna grab some titanium white and put that out here. I'm gonna use all sorts of blues today. We're gonna use some Brilliant Ultramarine and we are going to use a little bit of hot saffron or pure orange. And what we're going to do is we are going to make a light blue color that's gonna be the main color for our sky. And so I'm going to use some Brilliant Ultramarine, a big chunk of white. Maybe we'll go ahead and put two chunks of white in there just for fun. And we'll mix this up. And your sky is going to be a different color than my sky. And the sky that I'm gonna paint here is gonna be different than the sky on the original painting. And that's perfectly fine. No, Skies are ever going to be exactly the same. I'm gonna put a little hot saffron in here. And I'm telling you, Stephen has been the best co-pilot on this um, road trip because he's I don't been know the... why you're saying co-pilot because I've done all the driving. Well, I was gonna say you're the best co-pilot because you did all the driving. It's been great for me to be able to nap uh, from coast to coast. We are, like I said, back where this all began for me because in the mid 1970s, I came to uh, the Destin, uh, Florida area to take uh, some workshops from Priscilla Hauser, who was one of the foremost decorative painters in America, or probably in the world, I would say. And she used to teach workshops um, in the Destin area. And there was a hotel called the Sea Dome Inn, and it was one of the few hotels that had an indoor swimming pool. So even if you weren't near the beach, you could, uh, when you walked in, you got a huge whiff of um, chlorine, which lets you know you were right near the beach. And we really are bringing it home because Priscilla was in our very first episode of Art Talk, right? Yes, she was when we were talking about some of my first lessons when we uh, painted a lemon. Uh, we uh, FaceTimed her. You mean we're, we're live right now? We, we are live right now. You are here <laughs> in this. <laughs> I'm going to get you, Andy. <laughs> and so she has been a dear friend, mentor, second mother to me. 
uh, I guess I was probably 12 or 13 when I went to take my um, first seminar with her. And it was life-changing experience. You don't often have those kind of things that change the course of your life happen to you when you're a preteen. Uh, but it was certainly the case for me. So I'm putting out a little Calypso Sky, and I'm also going to put out a little uh, Patina, just getting lots of these beautiful kind of sea colors out. And we are going to grab a one-inch flat brush, and we're going to start painting. And I want to let you know, before we put one stroke of paint on here, that it is probably going to start to get a little bit sticky before we get completely finished, and we want to work that to our advantage. So you can see that there is light colored sky here. You've got some beautiful white clouds. You can see some of these aqua tones in there. And as we move over here, it gets much darker and bluer. And so we're going to keep working. We're going to probably layer on a couple of different colors. We're going to come back with our palette knife and change it up a little bit, but it's all good. So we are going to start uh, by putting in our horizon line. And I just have sketched that on the canvas. It's not quite um, halfway down. It's um, got a little more sky than water. And I'm going to take some Brilliant Ultramarine and some Hot Saffron, and I'm going to brush mix that here on my palette and pick up a little tiny smidge of my blue color and just make this brush mixture. Mine looks a little too purpley for me. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue to that. And then I am going to try to make this easier on Stephen and just do this by dragging my brush right along that horizon line, trying to keep it as even as I can. It doesn't have to be perfectly narrow, but do try to make it as straight as you can. Is there a pattern for this online? Uh, we will put a pattern up for this. It's not going to look like very much. It's going to basically be a horizontal line, and then it looks like a couple of uh, just kind of squiggly lines to indicate the sand dunes over there. But that is, we will give you that so that you don't have to really worry about it. Our horizon is going to kind of stop over here where our sand dunes uh, come out there. So this is what we've got right now to get started, is this horizon line, and we're going to paint above it, and then we're going to paint below it. So I'm going to take some of this original blue color, and we're going to start patting this color on. And you see as I come right down to that horizon line, I can touch it, but I don't really want to go below it. And I am painting vertically. Just tap in this color on, and if I need to, I can pick up some more. We'll probably run out of some of this color, and we'll end up brush mixing but we just want to get some of this blue color started on here. And I have to ask Stephen if he knows the um, old sailors saying about the color of the sky and the time of day. Uh, uh, no. Okay. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. So I don't really, I'm not a sailor. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I'm not a sailor, and that's probably why I don't know that. Well, I probably know it just because I'm older and I've heard more, more old sayings. For those of you who don't know, I am at least twice as old as Stephen. And so we have a lot of fun playing the... Would Stephen have any idea about that game? And My favorite thing is that like when we play that game, you say, do you remember? Like I was alive during most of this. Because well, remembering uh, implies that it happened when I was on Earth or near it, you know? And you're referencing things that happened in the, the 70s or 80s. Yes. Well, it's a, still a fun game for me to play. <laughs> All right. So you can see I've started to blend in uh, some of these other colors. I picked up some of this um, blue that we added uh, I'm not even sure what we added to that, but maybe a little aqua just to change up that color. And as long as we're moving toward our left side and we keep 
just tapping and patting this on using vertical strokes, you're going to end up with a pretty nice looking sky. So just keep patting this color on. Make sure you use enough paint so that you are not having any uh, trouble spreading the paint out on the canvas. If you're struggling to get it to cover, you need a little bit more paint. And I'm going to pick up some more white. And we're just going to apply that and blend it in. You can still see some brush marks and there's nothing wrong with that. This is one of the interesting things about the sky at the beach is that it's always changing and the you can look at the sky one minute and it's very, very blue. And then you look at it the next minute and it's starting to look a little bit of an aqua color. Uh, you can see some, you know, sunset at the beach is absolutely beautiful because the sky changes color and we get all of this great kind of um, warm pink and peach tones in the sky, always changing, always looking a little bit different. And I'm just kind of going back and making sure that my colors are nicely blended in. If I can still see some brush marks, that's okay. You just want them to be subtle and kind of not all up in your face. All right, so we're going to take some more of this lighter color and I'm going to shift my canvas down just a little bit. It's, that makes Stephen happy because it's easier for you all to see what's going on here. And we're going to start picking up more of this original blue, white, and hot saffron color. And we're going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue, a little bit more hot saffron in here. And for fun, I'm going to go ahead and grab some dioxazine purple because we'll be using that quite a bit a little bit later on in our painting, but I want to just brush a little purple in that and over here on this edge, go ahead and let that sky be kind of violet. And then we'll work this color back over to the right hand side. And again, I'm using vertical strokes to create my sky. And while I still have some time to mess with and play in this a little bit, usually I don't want you to play in your paint too much, but you know, we are at the beach and it's all about play. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of patina and we're going to just work some of that in and you can see how it instantly changes the color of the sky and gives us this very soft kind of aqua color. And I'm just tapping and patting and softening this in. And I'm going to pick up a little Calypso sky and we'll work some of that in. And again, it's another really nice kind of tropical blue that we're just adding into the sky for fun. And some of you are going to want a very, very uh, aqua tropical blue sky, and some are going to want a more subtle kind of overcast sky, but it's all good. Whatever you want to do, you can play and make this sky your own. Okay, we're just going to wipe our brush and come back and soften this color in so it looks like it's part of the sky and not something that we've just laid on top. And I'll pick up some white because I want to put in some soft clouds. We'll put those on and we'll soften those in. Like I said, your canvas is probably starting to get a little bit sticky now and that's going to be just fine. Work with it. Don't, don't fight it. All right, so I've got more white on my brush now and we're going to put in some clouds and I'm putting this paint on using a heavy uh, pressure, really working that in. And then I'm going to wipe my brush and I'm going to blend it with a very light pressure. But don't think we're done with this. We're going to come back and put some palette knife clouds over this really light area that we've got on here. But I think, you know, overall, that's a pretty nice looking sky. But we are going to need to go ahead and put some peach tones in our sky. 
So I'm going to take some titanium white and a little hot saffron, and that's giving me a really kind of going to be an orangey uh, peach color, which I think is going to be okay. But just for fun, let's add a little tiny touch of apple red to this to make it a little bit more pink tone. You can make this color basically whatever you want it to be. Uh, some people will like a more peachy tone. Some people will like a pinkier tone. It's up to you what you want to put in there. But I'm going to kind of start over here where my sand dunes are reaching the ocean. And I'm going to use vertical strokes to add this peachy glow right along the horizon line. And you want this to be subtle. You don't want it to be really... It's not the star of the show. Let's make sure that we keep it uh, kind of working in the background. So I'll lay my brush down and soften it in a little bit more. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. Pick up our trusty palette knife, and Stephen remembers all about the palette knife from our pit stop in Kansas. Oh, it's unfortunately grained uh, into my uh, every crease in my brain. <laughs> But you did amazing sunflowers there in Kansas. In Kansas. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to uh, tap my palette knife on the palette so that I don't have too much paint on my brush. And we are going to rub some of this white onto our sky, creating little fluffy clouds. And they can be brighter in some areas and softer in other areas but this is a really easy way to get beautifully uh, fluffy clouds into your landscape. So just watch what's happening on your canvas, pick up more paint as you need it, and then just kind of work that paint into the uh, underneath layer of your sky. So we're gonna continue uh, creating some clouds and I'm gonna put a few over here. And my sky seems to be a little dry over here, which is going to give me a great teaching moment here. All right, so that's just a little dry and we're not getting much happening there. So what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of that uh, light blue color, mix it in with my white. And I'm not doing a really good job of mixing. We're leaving it kind of half mixed. And then we'll put some of that blue on. And we're just going to mix them right here on the canvas using the palette knife. And this way you can really control what's happening because where my sky wasn't cooperating before, I got that little bit of blue on there and we are now able to soften our blue into our white and make a very subtle little cloud there. Just looking to see what's going on here. Checking out how much more I want to add. And I want to add just a little bit over here. And I'm going to add some patina and some white. Ooh, and I like the way that looks right there. So I'm going to leave that alone. Famous last words. <laughs> I'm going to try to leave that alone. But we're adding some of this light color in and then some of our original blue color to soften it. All right, I think, Stephen, we have reached the point where we are done with our sky. All right, so what's gonna happen now is we are going to take a little bit of a break because I think I need a Cuba Libre and we will let our sky dry before we come back and start in on the water. I'd like to take a minute to thank Plaid Enterprises for sponsoring Art Talk. They are the makers of folk art acrylics, which I absolutely love using. I've used this paint since I was a young tot, and now that I'm an old fart, I still use this paint. We have a 17-piece set that we've curated just for you. Ordering information is in the description below and we also have great brushes for you. We have a seven piece set of 
Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. These are absolutely incredible. I use them every time I paint. <laughs> and I've never done that in my entire life. Now, let's get back to our video. Okay, so we are back. Our sky is dry and we are about to paint some water. So we're gonna basically use most of the same colors that we used in our sky, but we're gonna put them in the water. And we are not necessarily trying to reflect the sky and the clouds and everything into the water. We're just getting some pretty colors on the water. All right, so I'm gonna pick up some of my uh, bluer sky color and we're gonna start patting that on right up next to that horizon line. And remember, if you're having any trouble getting your paint to fly, or not to fly, to glide on your canvas, then uh, make sure to pick up a little extra paint so you're not struggling with that. And I'm going to bring this color basically right along the horizon line. Again, trying to keep that as horizontal as we can. And once again, this is all gonna be done using the brush, making vertical strokes. And we are just continuing right along that horizon line. Now, Stephen, were you a beach going kid? Um, I was. My parents would go to uh, Navarre Beach. Uh huh. And that was our spot for a while. We hadn't been to that specific beach in a while, um, but I just went to Santa Rosa. Beautiful. Yeah, recently. And that's pretty cool. I like that spot a lot. When I was growing up, we lived in Atlanta and we went to Daytona Beach every year. My mother loved going to the beach and in Daytona, um, it is not, it's not built up with real tall high rise condos like a lot of the uh, Gulf Coast is. They have a lot of one and two story basically family-run hotels that are still there. And it had been quite a long time since I had been to Daytona, but I went down to teach a workshop. And as we were driving kind of along the beach road where all these little hotels were, I saw the Royal Arms Hotel, same white hotel with the orange uh, tile roofs on it. And I thought, I know exactly what that hotel is like. And we used to stay in the same room every year, and it had a, a kitchenette. And if you went out the back door, you went right out onto the shuffleboard um, uh, deck. So it was, you know, very, um, very reminiscent of the love boat going out to play some shuffleboard. But I remember getting sunburned there every year, too. And it's not like, you know, my parents weren't trying to protect us, but I guess, you know, like free roam, free range children, it just wasn't the way it is today. You got a sunburn and then you put um, aloe vera on it and you <laughs> were back out in the sun the next day wishing that it didn't hurt so bad. Well, the mistake that I make a lot is I go and put sunscreen on and then I immediately get in the water right after that and then it's just it just washes off you know mm -hmm. it's a typical mistake yeah but I, I, this is also just an aside every time I go to the beach without fail I get stung by a jellyfish every single time well I, I have avoided the jellyfish uh, but the sunburn not not so much and one year, uh, my cousins and I, we rented a, a beach house. And, you know, it was, uh, it was fine. I was under, it had a two-story deck. So the bottom patio was in shade. I was fine. Everything was going along great. And we were going to be leaving um, the following afternoon or evening. So I'm like, come on out, you know hang out with us, you know, we'll build a big sandcastle, it'll be fun, you'll have fun. And I'm like, I'm going to get burnt and I'm not going to be enjoying, you know, the ride home with the bad sunburn. No, 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 we're not going to make you stay out long. Just come on out and have some fun. Don't, don't be that way. 
So, you know, a few rounds of don't be that way. Sunscreen up, head out to build the world's best sandcastle. About five minutes later, I do the touch test and I'm like, I am redder than a lobster, you people. <laughs> How could you let this happen to me? All right, so I have added some um, patina, some calypso sky, and some white, and I'm just tapping and patting and softening those colors into the water because you want your water to be um, colorful. It's one color ocean is not a pretty, pretty uh, scene, pretty seascape. I'm just adding some white, softening it in again, still with the vertical pulls, blending it in, making sure that everything looks good. It's nice and soft. No violent waves. We want no rip current. See all, I mean, we just, we could just start listing off the bad things. Yeah, the lesson ocean. here is stay out of the ocean. We're having, as of when we're filming, there's orca attacks all over the place. Have you seen those? Well, yes, and then I think, you know, don't think those fish are stupid. Well, they're not fish, but, you know, they're not they're not dumb. They know what's going on. Oh, no, on. It's, they're, they're smarter than us. I sure. Well, and, and they can tip over a boat. We can't do that. Well, they can, not only, it's not only the boats. I mean, there's the ice sheets. Yeah. The, the, have you seen the video with the little seal out on the mm -hmm. ice thing. Those orcas are like, we're having a snack. Yeah. And I can't blame them because when you're at the beach, you want a snack. You want a snack, but you also don't want sand in your snack. Mm -hmm. So um, dry chips are always good. <laughs> if you have dips, you need to have them covered at all times. All right, so we're gonna come put some uh, peach tones in our water over here. Titanium white little bit of hot saffron and maybe just a teeny tiny little bit of apple red and i'm going to start right up here kind of where my dune is uh, at the water and we're going to tap and pull just to create a nice little um, bit of a peachy tone there and i can come back with a little bit more paint don't necessarily want this to be darker, but I do want a little more paint there. And we'll just kind of go over that again, just touching, pulling. And you don't want to ever just think of your water as being blue because that's boring as can be. But you can see we've got some nice kind of peach tones coming along here. And I'm just going to drop down and make another little series of pulls. When you were talking about orcas, I was glad that we didn't have them <laughs> in I'm the saying. Gulf. Yeah. <laughs> we mean, we have like little like reef sharks, you know, little tiny guys that won't do anything to people necessarily. Well, growing up before before you, we had jaws. And I remember I was too young to go to the movies to see Jaws. So it's back in the time before electronic devices. So I had a paperback copy of Jaws. And uh, during a, a stretch of that summer, uh, my uh, dad's sister was staying with us. And she and I read Jaws to each other. We were like our own audio book for each other before audiobooks were a thing. And so I remember that um, that was like the most terrifying thing because it made everyone in the world afraid of going in the water because dun and dun and dun and dun. You just did not know what was about to get you. And if anything touched your leg or your foot when you were in the water, it was just about two steps to try land. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. you were getting out of there pretty fast. All right, so you can see we've got some nice uh, peach tones in here. And our water is nice and calm. We have no shark sightings in here. So we are going to uh, pause while you all reflect back on um, how terrified you were of the ocean after you saw Jaws. And we will come back and start to work on our sand dunes. All right, Stephen, 
the tide is going out. So we are going to get started on our, um, you know, we've got to commit to this. Yeah. So uh, we are going to start on our uh, sand dunes now. So let's put out a little Prussian blue because that's what everybody thinks of when they think of Florida beaches and sand dunes. All right, I'm also gonna put out a little bit of sap green because I might need that. And I've got a number 12 flat brush. So I'm gonna start with my uh, Prussian blue and I'll go pick up a little bit of my brilliant ultramarine blue. And so this is what everybody thinks of when they are painting sand dunes is let's start up at the top of our dune and we'll just scrub on some of this uh, beautiful uh, blue color. And I don't want, um, I don't want to smooth top to my uh, sand dune because we are going to be painting some of this kind of scrubby um, foliage on there. So we want to uh, have just kind of a, a casual messy top to our uh, dune. And I am old enough to remember when you could drive onto the beaches. Can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. We, you'll, get a, we, you'll get a big old fine. We, we ruined that for everyone. Yeah. Especially in some places you'll run over like sea turtle nests. See, well, di at different times of the year, there are the nesting sea turtles. And then uh, some of it has to do with those big, really tall sea oats that you see. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they keep the beach from eroding. And so they definitely don't want um, those to be messed with. All right, so I'm pulling down some shadowy um, blues in, down into my sand dunes. And I know this is very counterintuitive to a lot of you who want, you know, pristine white sand, but pristine white sand in a painting is absolutely boring. You just don't want that. Um, there are so, I just picked up a little Prussian blue, uh, not Prussian blue, Doxazine purple uh, for fun. And we're going to bring some of that right down here along the horizon line. And I'm just kind of slicing back and forth, carrying that out. So Andy, I wanted to go back a little bit. We just talked about sharks, right? Sure. Um, <laughs> What's not to talk about sharks? I, I want to get vulnerable for a second. Okay. I really don't like sharks. And if you know really... me, if you know me on a personal level, you know this about me. Um, and the, the the reasoning is that I saw the movie Jaws way too young, of course, and it installed some sort of primal fear in my brain where I don't like. It's not as bad as it used to be, but when I was a kid, like if there was a picture of sharks like on the page of a book, I couldn't touch my finger to the page. It's like how some people are with spiders or snakes. Oh yeah, and I get it. I mean, um. I know that you have an older sister. Um, probably if you had an older brother, that would have been used to torment you No forever. doubt, yeah. Because My sister's actually a, a, a good person. She well, doesn't harass yeah, me with that. You, um, you always had um, those older siblings or cousins, things like that, who always found some way to make sure that the younger one was going to have trauma that lasted yeah. into their uh, adulthood. I will just relay this uh, non-relatable story. Uh, I had an older cousin, um, and it, when I was much younger, I was super allergic to mosquito bites, bee stings, wasp stings. I mean, it just swelled up horrible. And so to torment me one day, one of my older cousins, tied me to a swing set in the backyard, literally lashed me to the swing set. And it was all, I mean, it was kind of funny and, you know, we were all laughing about it until she walked up to me and whispered in my ear, if you sweat, the bees will come and sting you. Good grief. And then she walked into the house, leaving me tied to the swing set. And of course, terrified that I was gonna start sweating and be swarmed and attacked by bees. So, I mean, mercifully, I didn't get stung or anything, but it wasn't, it wasn't the most pleasant um, afternoon I have ever spent 
and uh, her daughter was going to come stay with me um, and then her folks were going to come pick her up. And so I, of course, am the best Uncle Andy there ever is. I'm like, what kind of junk food are you not allowed to have? Because I will stock the kitchen full of it. Right. And she says, oh, well, you know, you don't need to do that. And I'm like, listen, I know your mom better than you do. And I know there are things that you all just, you know, you're not allowed to have often. And she says, I really do like some chocolate ice cream. And I'm like, is there a brand? Do you need chocolate chips in it? Chocolate chunks? Mm -hmm. you know, do you need a strip of fudge in it? What? You know, the worst. Tell me the worst you can do. So, of course, you know, she came to see me and I'm like, you know, you know, make sure that you are sick as a dog when your parents come to pick you up because that's what good uncles do. Um, but then I we were talking about her mom and I said, oh, I said, you know, your mom, when she used to do, you know, very bad things to me and she says, Oh, my mom would never do that. And I'm like, trust me. So I told her about, you know, being tied to the swing set. And she goes, I really can't believe my mother would do that. And I'm like, I am telling you, your mom would do that to me. She wouldn't do it to you. All right. So we've got blue and purple going on our uh, sand dunes. And so I'm going to pick up some aqua and I'm going to brush some of that on. This back dune, we've got a big front dune that we're going to cover up with a lot of foliage, but we're going to work some of this aqua on here. And I'm just scrubbing this in. We want to make sure that we've got a nice transition between our colors. And I'm going to pick up some of my sky color and brush some of that on there. So we are repeating that color. And what we don't want is anything that is boring. So Lots of pretty fun color going on there. I'm going to take some more aqua and I'm going to work some of that in here on the front dune. And just kind of brush some of that over here. Stretch, start stretching this out and then pick up some of the water or the color we use for the water because we've got now this aqua in our brush and it's going to change that. And we can brush some of that right down at the front of the water where the water's meeting our dune. Every time you go to the beach and you look at the dunes and you see the color of the sand and the, um, the foliage or the brush that's growing there, it's always different. It depends on the time of day, uh, it depends on the weather conditions, but it's always changing and it's always beautiful to see. So picking up some of my lighter blue colors, I've got some uh, patina on the brush now and we're scrubbing some of that in. And we haven't even talked about sand yet. We are simply getting some color on the canvas. All right, so you can see that we've got, you know, a dune that's coming out here in the front. We've got a couple of big dunes in the background. And this area down here is going to be a mass of foliage. So I'm going to set that little number 12 brush down and pick up my three quarter inch flat brush. And I'm going to use some sap green and some dioxazine purple because that's always the color of some foliage. So you could see that super, super dark. And that's exactly what we want. And we're stretching that out. And we're going to pick up a little bit more sap green. Kind of carry that color up. So I know that we're in Florida, but we're talking beaches. Makes me think of uh, Hawaii. And have you, have you ever been there? I have not been to Hawaii. I haven't been there either, so I was going to get you to confirm this for me. But I hear they have wild chickens running around on the beach there. Like the one behind you. Well, <laughs> if I saw one of those running around the beach in Hawaii, I'd probably be a little uh, concerned about those beaches. But uh, the way, I mean, it really wouldn't surprise me. They, um, it's just like here in um, Georgia. We have the Cumberland Island off the coast of Georgia, and they've got the wild 
uh, horses that run uh, all through there. So, uh, you know, there are, you know, wild uh, animals that are on the beaches and, you know, you never, you never really know what you're going to see at the beach. If it was possible to drive to Hawaii, you bet that would have been a stop on our road trip. If we had to drive to Hawaii, I think I would have sprung for some airline tickets. All right, so we've got a nice uh, dark base here for uh, this uh, area of foliage that's at the front, but let's take some more of our dioxazine purple and sap green, and let's give some foliage up here on our top dune. And I'm just kind of tapping this on with the corner of my brush, kind of rolling my brush around, making sure that we get some of that dark color coming down the dune. And some more of it back over here. Just tapping this on, giving it you know, some nice shapely foliage. Okay, I'm going to shift now to a number 10 filbert brush. So a filbert brush is basically a flat brush that doesn't have any corners on it. It's rounded at the end. Uh, sometimes these brushes are called cat's tongue brushes, um, although a filbert is actually a little wider than a cat's tongue. But this is going to help give some nice shape to our foliage. And while we're shifting brushes, let's go ahead and get out some more um, uh, foliage color. So I'm going to put out a little bit of uh, sunny yellow. I'm going to put out a little bit of lime green. So since since we are in Florida, have you ever been to Miami? I have not. I've been a few times down there, uh, but most of my time in Florida was uh, Florida Panhandle. Yeah, that's about the same for me. I've also been to Orlando. Uh, Mickey's house. Yeah, man. I um, was there, heavens, the last time I was there was in 1982. They used to have um, a grad night that was there for seniors to go and enjoy the Magic Kingdom. And I think that's even before we had any Epcot going on. So... I guess you would say, or you would laugh at me and be like, you were so old school. So we went to uh, there for uh, the grad night and, you know, got to see some different performers and, you know, ride everything. And at that time, I believe, I don't think we had to wear a tie, but I think we had to have uh, dress slacks, a collared shirt, um, and dress shoes. So making it the most uncomfortable clothing to wear at Disney World in the history of uncomfortable clothes. Yeah, that sounds rough. At that age, you can deal with it, but it was not. Um, I would prefer, you know, comfort over fashion for that any day. I think the last time I was at Disney World uh, was probably a decade ago. Just about, um, I went with my family, but before that, I w went on a school band trip, and I played in like one of the parks um, with like the rest of the school band. We played like two or three songs and like packed up and just went about our day after that at the <laughs> at the parks. So, what instrument were you playing? I played drums. I thought you would have been a drummer. Yeah, it it in. If you work at Plaid, I apologize for my constant tapping and... You know, your, your tapping is not annoying at all. All right, so I'm just tapping some of the sap green on, creating these kind of um, little bits of foliage. And we're going to tap a little bit down here just to kind of play with the edge, soften up uh, some of the shapes a little bit. And before we get too much further into this, we are going to put some bright white sand on our uh, beach. So speaking of bright white sand, let's put out some more bright white. This is, again, titanium white. And I've got my trusty palette knife in hand. 
and we are going to load it up. And I'm going to put a little bit of blue in it because we don't want our sand to be too white too quick. So taking this kind of blue and white mixture and we're painting or patting and tapping that on. And let's come up here to this dune here where we have more area for the sun to be hitting that sand dune. And we're going to take a deep breath and get ready to apply some sand dunes to this painting. All right, so we're gonna pull some of this white down our dune, and I'm just looking to see what this looks like on the monitor for you all. And that really does start to make that look like a sand dune, don't you agree? I agree. It's surprising how quickly that changed from this kind of blob to an actual sand dune. Pretty easy. Pretty easy indeed. But I've got more white on my brush and I'm going to just flick. Well, that's actually doing pretty good. I just flicked some more white. So now that we've got some nice bright highlighties going on there, and I'm gonna pick up some more of my blue and white mixture. And we're going to uh, put in another bit of a sand dune here. Just gonna play with the shape of this dune a little bit. I'm gonna flip a little bit of that up. There we go. Now we've got a, the face of another uh, sand dune going on there, and we're gonna put another bit up here, kind of in this darker area. And once again, we can pick up more white this time. Take a deep breath, and we're gonna put this on, and we're just gonna. Uh, stick our toes in the cool sand as we uh, put that bunch of white paint on there and very quickly we are forming a beautiful uh, sand dune there and you can just feel that sand all pushed and kind of piled up there in among this uh, shrubs and foliage like the waves pushed it there all by itself Yes, and you're not having you're not having to work yourself to death to to really get a beautiful effect. Okay, now before I mess around and mess that up, we're going to leave that alone and we're going to go back to our number ten filbert brush. Okay, let's start uh, lightening up some of our um, foliage in here. So we can take sap green and we can add lime green to that because that's a nice light green color that we haven't used yet. But to make that part of our painting, let's add a little aqua to that so it relates to some of the other colors in there. Because we always want everything in our painting to look like it belongs there in the painting. So we're gonna mainly add light colors on the right side of our uh, little areas of foliage. All right, so we're gonna make sure that we get most of our light color on the right side of our little clusters of foliage because that's kind of, I'm imagining the sun hitting it that way. But you can do, you know, however it is going to suit you. And I'm using the kind of the non-existent corner of my filbert brush and we're just kind of rolling the brush and doing some taps just to create some interesting shapes of foliage. And I really wish I, I'm sure at one point somebody told me what this stuff was, but it's very, very dense and very, very thick. And I like to think that it's probably full of snakes and spiders and bugs and stuff that you don't want any All part of. All sorts of treacherous creatures. And then you go <laughs> out in the water and there's sharks and jellyfish and We're in Florida whales. where everything uh, wants to kill you. So listening to somebody trying to describe Australia and <laughs> she goes, it's the place where everything is going to kill you. Yeah. So Florida may not be that bad, but let's not. Uh, I'm not one for pressing luck. <laughs> so we're going to, you know. Well, then you, it, got, you got a Panama City and it's a whole different kind of danger, you know. I, I do. My folks are in Panama City. So, <laughs> so you know. I know. Yes, indeed. All right. So I'm adding a little bit of sunny yellow 
to our mixture of sap green and lime green. And you could see that that's a little bit lighter color going on there. And we just want to make sure that we've got some interesting shapes of foliage. And it, we don't want our uh, dense foliage to look like it's been lopped off or pruned in any sort of uh, form or fashion. This is always just going to be kind of a wild and uh, reckless look of this foliage. But there is, I think, almost no landscape that is prettier than, you know, the gentle uh, ocean. There are some people that love those huge crashing waves and all of that kind of stuff, and I'm like, that's more yeah. of a, like a Pacific Coast thing, which we saw already, right? We did um, when we were out in California and we saw Big Sur and uh, all of that stuff. Yeah. And the, even further up the Pacific Northwest, which was not part of our road trip, uh, the Oregon coast and like Cannon Beach where the cliffs come down to the mm -hmm. water and you can see all the walruses and seals and sea lions and all of that kind of stuff. And that's all great, a great episode of... Uh, wild kingdom but um you know we're we're florida gulf coast we're a little bit a uh, little bit more chill as the young people say yeah all right so i've wiped out uh, some of the greens in my brush and now i'm going to rinse out that because i want to basically thin down a little bit of sap green and we'll start with sap green and we'll see if we need to alter that by adding any other color to it, but I want to make a transparent green and then just kind of in a few places dab some of this transparent green on just outside kind of where I've already done some painting. And this really gives a cool effect that it's not, not always everything that you can see. Sometimes it's just the effect of a color that you feel. All right, so now that we've got a little bit of that transparent color on there, Let's take some of our light green color, which is sap green, lime green, and sunny yellow, and let's add a little bit of white to that. And then let's gonna start down here at the front. And that's a lot brighter, but it needs some more yellow in it because we don't want it to be chalky. Oh, that's much better. A little bit brighter yellow color in there. And we're tapping this on. Notice that I'm constantly kind of rolling my brush around so that I don't make the same pattern over and over and over. We want something that's going to be a little bit different. Every time we put our brush down, we want to get a different uh, type of mark. Add a little bit of this brighter green up here. I'm not going to do a lot of it. Just a few little dabs here and there. And if you are doing this at a fairly good clip, you will end up with some much nicer looking uh, foliage because it won't be all the same mark everywhere. All right, so I'm going to go back and pick up some sap green and a little bit of sunny yellow and a little bit of lime green. And we're going to play down here, adding in just some little lighter dabs of foliage because I don't want this whole area to be super, super dark. All right, I think I'm liking that pretty well, but let's add a couple of little marks that are a little bit different shape. So I'm gonna add, just using the edge of my brush, I'm just gonna make a little pull there. So we've got a different sort of mark there and I might do one down here and maybe a different one there. It just breaks this up and gives it a little bit uh, a little bit of a different shape to look at so everything's not quite the same. All right, let's change things up. Let's pick up some Calypso Sky and a little Aqua on our brush. And let's come in here and add some of this blue foliage in here. And why are you doing that, you ask? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I'm glad you're here all week, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we are doing that so that we can relate our kind of dune color 
to our foliage and add some interest and fun color to this because we don't want it to all necessarily be green foliage. So we'll add, I'm picking up some more um, aqua. Is it bad every time you say Dune, I think of the movie? Yes, that is that's really not, bad. That's, that's not acceptable. It's acceptable, it's just not cool. I mean, there's dunes in that movie. Yeah. There's also giant worms. And we're back to why it's not cool to think of that. Why is that? Okay. Because then you end up going from that to, is it Jeepers Creepers? Uh, that's not the connection I would have made from movie to movie. I would have gone like Dune, then Blade Runner, then like Oh no, Robo I went Cop. worm to worm to worm. Oh, you're talking worms. I'm just talking 80s movies. I mean, and, and if we're going to really, you know, talk about worms, then the the layer of the white worm. Yeah, you lost me. Trimmers, though? Trimmers is what I was thinking. Okay. Of. Kevin Bacon? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's where I was going, but uh, I didn't quite get there. But then uh, there is the layer of the white worm, which was a classic movie. I think a Ken Russell movie. And if you've not uh, fallen into the realm of uh, Ken Russell films, <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole another. Um, it's a rabbit hole. It is. Uh, odd, odd, odd movies that just do not get anything but Stranger. So I'm going to add a couple of marks here. And I've added them with aqua. And you're asking, what are those marks, Andy? What are those marks, Andy? They are dabs of color, pieces of color. That's all they are. So now I've picked up a little bit of uh, Calypso Sky, and I'm just going to kind of sweep over those with some Calypso Sky. And then finally, a little bit of patina. Those could sit and rest for a little while. They don't have to. But it just adds a little bit of kind of a funky touch to um, the uh, foliage area. And I can take this lighter um, kind of mismatch of color that's on my brush. I can dab a little bit of some blues here and there. Don't want to overdo, but it's kind of fun to add some pretty color. And while we're thinking of pretty color, adding some Prussian, not, this is not Prussian blue. This is dioxazine purple. I don't know why I cannot keep those colors. They're straight. pretty similar. They are. They're both dark on your palette. All right. So I'm adding some purple and going to add a little bit of purple here and there. And I think that really does brighten up uh, some of these little dark areas in your painting and it's kind of fun for whoever's looking at your picture to go oh cool look at that there's some little bits of purple here and there that you're not expecting to see don't overdo it just add a few uh little bits here and there and i'm going to look at my original painting again to see if there's anything that we need to do and we probably need to just bring a little bit of the water up actually into and over uh, this foliage so I'm going to take my last little bit of water that I have here on my palette and I'm going to just make a few little vertical pulls as it moves into uh, the foliage here. And I'm going to do that again as I drop down. And I'm hoping I've got just enough for one more little dab of that to come way in there. All right, so you can see how we've now cut up our foliage a little bit and let that continue out, you know, into our water. And I think that really does let you um, kind of get some uh, dimension, some spatial dimension going on in your seascape. And if you look at yours, and you think there's anything that you need to alter or change, you can certainly do that. I'm going to take a little bit of white on my palette knife, kind of tap and get that loaded up. And I really do want to come back and just really make sure I've got some solid white 
going on, my dudes. Maybe even scooch a little bit of light back in there. And before I get carried away, and as the sun is going down, Stephen, I think that our seascape is finished and so is our time here at the beach in Florida. And so is our road trip. That's true. We are going to uh, wait till morning and have a quick trip back to Atlanta where we will uh, continue on with Art Talk. Thanks for watching this final episode of our Road Trippin' with Andy series on Art Talk. We're glad that you joined us for the last leg of this uh, adventure. We would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to Art Talk. And I want to let you know that in the description box below are links to the downloadable pattern for this episode, as well as links for all of the Art Talk kits that are available at plaidonline.com. If you'd like, you can leave us a comment in the comment section below. If you'd like to leave a compliment, you can do that in the comments below. And if you'd like to email us, you can reach us at art underscore talk at platonline.com. And we look forward to seeing you again for our next episode of Art Talk.